Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful 12th of May, 2020. Coming up in this week's podcast, we'll be discussing Canadian rights, possible violence on the horizon, and infinite taxes. And plus some added features I might be uh, putting on here in the show every week. Anyhow, stick around. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This podcast is brought to you by Mad Hatter Industries, No Quarter Given, and Rampage Coffee Company. Strong, rich, and smooth. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. New sponsors. Hopefully something will work out with that. As I said, it's May 12th. 2020 and what's this country coming to yet again firstly i want to say thank you to all of my beautiful responses or all the beautiful responses that have been uh, given to me by uh, listeners and viewers such as yourself over the past little while thank you once again Uh, i've been getting a lot of comments in regards to uh, canadian rights firearms uh, everything in life that we take for granted and appreciate but nonetheless, basic rights and principles that we should all be fighting for. Now, as I say before, and as I say again, I really don't care who owns a gun or who doesn't. It doesn't bother me if my neighbors don't like firearms or if they like firearms. It doesn't bother me if my neighbors enjoy a ride in a Corvette or if they don't ride in a Corvette. It's a matter of choice, personal freedom. Now, I'm going to say this one more time, especially the people that have weighed in on my profile page and have made comments in regards to gun ownership in this country. You're right. It is not exactly a right. It is a privilege. But it's privileges being taken away out of fear and not out of logic or reason. Now, to my American friends who have a state-by-state legislation in regards to what you can own and not own, you know, let's look at them. And realize how many major cities in the United States are safe because of personal gun ownership. Okay? That's a statistic that we can look at later. But let's look at Canadian statistics. How many people have died in the name of an AR-15 in this country? Not too many. You'll be far few in between to find a statistic that will prove that. But, of course, Bill Blair, Justin Trudeau, Christopher Freeland, and, all, of course, all the other anti-gun teetotalers out there who uh, don't want guys like me or anybody else to have a gun because, you know, it, it might cause a crime. That's just like saying, well, if you drink a beer, then you might as well drink and drive, too. No, that's unfactual and it's unfounded. Anyway, I'm not going to harp too much on the gun stuff anyway. Just once again, thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my listeners out there who have said some wonderful things in light of the past few months with all this beer bug and this political panicking and all the pandering given to a handful of interests. Uh, It's good that we're starting to see some light here. And as I said in the title, uh, discussing the whole issue and rights. Now, I'll be leaving some links at the uh, end of this podcast in my description column. Uh, Some video footage that CTV and the Rebel Media put together. They had a gun rally protest at the provincial legislation in Edmonton there on Sunday. And there were a few people that came out, and there were social distancing, what have you. You know, minding their business, speaking their mind, as any good Canadian should, regardless of background or whatever you believe in. Freedom of speech is paramount. However, by the looks of some of those sheriffs who did not understand that concept, arrested an individual for no apparent reason, citing Section uh, uh, 73.1 in the Health Code or the Health Act of the province. Now, I know there's a pandemic going on. I know there's an issue going on with the beer bug. Okay, we get it. But uh, it's getting to a point where people are getting sick and tired of having to stay home, being told what's essential, what's not essential, basically being told what to fucking do all the time. It's that simple. And yet you've got a group of 15 to 20 to 30, possibly 40 people at this rally saying, hey, what the hell is going on? And you arrest two or three people for speaking their mind. Now, I'm not questioning the credibility of our law enforcement. They have done some wonderful things. 
for the community. They've done some wonderful things for charity. And I've, as I said before, I know some police officers that are upstanding and uh, straight shooting kind of people. They don't take any bullshit, but they don't give any bullshit either. Yet we're constantly seeing an example of poor judgment, right? Everything from the Lethbridge uh, incident where that young girl who was advertising a restaurant was basically apprehended because they thought she had a gun, even though it was a goddamn toy, to a few people being carted away at the legislature for protesting, for speaking their God-given right, or God's given right, or whatever you believe in, the right to speak your mind. Now, enough is enough. We hear it from our politicians. Enough is enough. No more guns. Enough is enough. Stay at home. Well, enough is enough. We're not going to stay at home. We're going to question this status. We are going to question the abilities that we all have. We are going to question your abilities. That's directed at the authorities in this country. Now, keep in mind, no one's throwing rocks or setting off explosives or doing anything heinous. Right? They're being peaceful. Freedom of assembly, freedom of association, it's in our charter rights. But I guess the charter rights are out of the window now because of this pandemic, right? All of a sudden, well, it's a health crisis here, so therefore, we don't need to abide by this. Screw the people, we know what's best for you, and that's all there is to it. Well, you keep proving every day that you do not know what's best for us. Okay, you don't. If you're going to cart away one individual... And whether it's on the rebel media or on CTV or any other mainstream uh, conglomerate, what are you telling the people there? What are you telling the folks? Eh? Are you telling the folks that uh, uh, do as we say, not as we do? Yeah, you, you, basically you're doing that. Are you telling the folks uh, uh, you better assemble, but uh, if we disagree with you, we'll take you away? Wow, that's fucking democratic, isn't it? Eh? That's really democratic. Think about it, folks. I know there's people out there that are afraid to go out and say something because of uh, some kind of repercussion or persecution. Or they might feel something from their employers or uh, whatever group they are part of. But uh, let me tell you something. This group that we call Canada is getting tired of it. There are people getting ticketed for taking their kids to a park. There are people being ticketed for taking their young boys out rollerblading. There's people being ticketed for minding their own goddamn business and people being ticketed and arrested for speaking their minds. So is that in the name of public safety? Do some of these authority figures feel threatened when people are questioning their motives or questioning their ability to do their job? You've heard me long enough on the podcast here talk about uh, Justin Trudeau and his fucking bludgering wisdoms. His appointed councils, his appointed senators, his appointed ministers. And what have they said? They've all said stupid shit. One minute, don't wear a mask. Next minute, wear a mask. Don't wash your hands. Wash your hands. Do this. Do that. Have they come up with any kind of concrete decision or any real concrete solutions to fight this issue? No, of course not. But the moment you disagree with said authority, you're either deemed as a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, xenophobe, or whatever kind of word they want to throw in your fucking face, just so they don't have to deal with the responsibilities of their actions. Piss poor leadership, ladies and gentlemen. Piss poor fucking leadership. Anyway, tell me what you think. Reach me at CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook under Krusty Canuck. On Instagram at CanuckCrusty. You can also find me on the Podbean there, podbean.com, and uh, leave a comment or two here in the YouTube. Give me a thumbs up and ring the bell. So you'll be notified of new content coming on its way. And if you feel like donating, please do. I'll leave links in the subscribe and donate section of the description part. And uh, feel free to donate if you can. Every little bit helps, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, as I carry on with the rights and violence and taxes, <coughs> a friend of mine recently just uh, got a hold of me. And he swore to me, or he asked me to politely not uh, mention his name. Of course, I respect people's privacy. But uh, he too received benefits, like I did. From Veterans Affairs, and he was told by Veterans Affairs that it was uh, tax-free. Basically, he wasn't going to get taxed on it. And uh, he told me he owes an additional six grand 
because of the benefits he received because of his injury. And I'm just shaking my head, you know. He wasn't asking me for a loan or any kind of help out or anything like that. He was just really, really frustrated. He's got the means to pay it, not all at once, but uh, his livelihood now is compromised because of said taxes. Now, he was a good little boy, filed on time, did everything he was told because he's been doing that all his life. And I know this individual, he's a pretty upstanding citizen. He doesn't lie, doesn't cheat. He's good to his wife, good to his kids. You know, he's just an all-around good fucking human being. And uh, to receive that notification uh, saying that they got reassessed and, uh, you know, this is after he paid a couple hundred bucks to H&R Block <laughs> to get him and his wife's uh, taxes done. And then in turn around have to dish out another six grand or so uh, because they, quote-unquote, reassessed him. So, he was lied to. He's a little upset, and I don't blame him. And there's a few more Canadians that I've heard through the grapevine who have gone through the same thing. And uh, I'm still waiting for my confirmation, too, but uh, I'll keep that private for now, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need to know my financial affairs. Not that I'm being dishonest, but uh, it's, it's disturbing to know that there are people out here that are working hard trying to get ahead, and they're getting it up the fucking chuff. Because Justin can't make up his mind. And I will blame Justin Trudeau. Yes, I'll fucking blame him. Because him and his infinite wisdom was saying things like, oh, the budget will balance itself. And Bill Morneau worrying about his own investment companies and being an heir to a small fortune. And all these individuals that have set up the so-called finances in this country have always come from well-to-do families. All right? Born into it. So, when it comes to the Canadian taxpayer, ladies and gentlemen, it's usually the middle-class folk that are getting it stuck. And speaking of Justin and his infinite wisdom, today he was even on uh, CTV talking about how he's increasing spending on the seniors to three or five hundred dollars. Now I looked at it and then I listened to it again. It's basically a lump sum payment of three or five hundred bucks. Wow, big spender, eh? And this is after he wants to give another twenty million. Uh, into some uh, foreign investment to help the less fortunate in other countries. And yet he doesn't want to help the less fortunate in our own country. So what's that tell you about priorities, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know, I'm getting sick and tired of talking about the guy, but he just angers so many people, especially out here in the West. He has done nothing, nothing concrete, nothing substantial to help the Canadian people out. You know, he, he's... <laughs> The past almost three months now, he's, he's, he's coming in and out of his cottage, dictating this, dictating that. And you have a few people sitting in, in Parliament right now, you know, cleaners and maintainers and shit. Um, my call would be, let's get back to fucking Parliament here. Let's get back to work. Screw the pandemic issue and start getting things on the go here. Okay? How much time off has, has Parliament been off the past, well, let's say year now? They had the big break last summer, building up to the last election, okay? Then they had another break after the election, another Christmas break, and now this pandemic thing broke out, and uh, another fucking break, okay? And yet they okay to raise, 1st of April, and yet they can't get back to work to earn it. And yet there are people out here who cannot get a paycheck because of this uh, uh, issue, uh, people are being fined for being out in public with their kids, not maintaining social distancing, and then you go to speak out against the vote and in the legislature, you get arrested uh, because you you know it might be offending somebody. And yet these police officers, are they social distancing? No. Some of them have masks on, some of them don't. Are they standing six feet apart? No. It takes three or four of them to remove one person from a protest. Anyway, I'll leave links to the video and you'll see what I'm talking about here. And uh, think for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, <laughs> holy shit, holy shit in a handbasket indeed. So that's what brings me to the rights here. Do we have the right to speak our mind? It says so, but what happens if we do? Right? What happens if we do? We're going to be arrested. You will not walk the line here, so therefore you'll be put in the cooler. Jawohl, this is what you do here, yes? Aha. There's also a video there on YouTube of a, a passionate police officer from the States who uh, made a beautiful speech there. And apparently, I guess he got fired for speaking his mind. So 
I guess our American brothers and sisters are feeling the sting too when it comes to uh, this distancing and this pandemic issue, right? Anyway, I'll, I'll leave a link to that as well, but uh, it was a pretty powerful speech. But uh, I'm just, oh, God. Anyway, coming up after a word from our sponsors, I'll be talking about uh, violence. Stay tuned. Rampage Coffee Company. Extremely delicious coffee. Roasted with purpose, then delivered to your favorite mug. Our delicious coffee comes packed with enough attitude to punch you out of your morning slippers. Here at Rampage Coffee Company, we provide you superior quality coffee that is delivered to the doorsteps of any Canadian who is ready to take their coffee game to the next level. We hand select quality beans to be a small batch roasted by our head roaster, which ensures unparalleled attention to details and amazing quality in all our coffee. Cheers to a freshly roasted kick-ass coffee. Rampage Coffee Company. Use the code Krusty Canuck to get free shipping on the Rampage Sampler. Mad Hatter Industries is now your average apparel company. The apparel is a bonus and a great way to spread the idea behind creating a community that supports each other and has their brother or sisters back at a time of need. Our mission is to create a community that supports individuals to create a fighting mindset for dealing with adversity. The Mad Hatter Industries logo is meant to be something that you can place your confidence and trust in. We will watch your back and we won't let you down. For more information, you can check us out online at via Instagram or Facebook at Mad Hatter Industries or through our website at www.madhatterindustries.ca. Use the podcast promo code CANUCK15 to enjoy 15% off your next order. All proceeds from Mad Hatter Industries go to support mental health organizations. I am back, ladies and gentlemen, from the uh, ad from our sponsors there. As I was saying, uh, rights, violence, and taxes. So, now we're talking about violence. So what's on the horizon now, ladies and gentlemen? Really? People are going to get mad? We're going to start fucking spilling blood in the streets? There's been lots of speculation out there in regards to what's going on right now. In Canada, the United States, in Britain, in Germany... All over the, the democratic world, as far as we know, right? Everybody is so worried about offending the Communist Party of China, right? And uh, just recently today, Brian Adams got his PP slap for his little tweet uh, by dissing wet markets and dissing bats and what have you. And, uh, <laughs> God, whether you like Brian Adams or not, he did some wonderful work in the 80s by making uh, the music he did. And uh, he put the world's attention to Canada and Canadian music alike. He wasn't the only one that did that, however, but uh, he got famous pretty quick. And, uh, you know, he's, he's quite the household name when you think about it. But uh, now he makes a comment about his tour being compromised because of this issue. But he never said anything racial. He wasn't pinpointing a group of people. He pinpointed a market and a style of market. And, of course, there are some people that are all up in uprage. Oh, my God, how could you say that? Blah, 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 blah. Well, here's my counterpoint to that. Toughen the fuck up. Okay? Now, if, there, if I have any Asian Canadians listening to this uh, podcast, this is not a comment towards you. This is not a comment towards uh, Japanese or Chinese or Korean or Vietnamese or Thai Canadians, for that matter. He made a point of talking about a market and a style of procurement, a style of trade and commerce that is basically unhealthy by Canadian standards. That is all. Okay? Whether you agree with Brian Adams or not, that's not the point. And it's getting ridiculous that so many people get outraged over a tweet or a comment, and yet you're not getting outraged by our freedoms being compromised here. You're not outraged by young men being carried off by police officers because of a disagreement, not because of any laws being broken. There's no outrage when people are getting tackled on private property because they look like a stormtrooper. Right? There's no outrage when there's poison water. There's no outrage when our oil and gas companies are being screwed in the butt and yet we graciously accept third world oil where human rights violations are paramount, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a matter of choices and what you want to protest. But as you can see, 
proof is in the pudding. A lot of our rights and privileges are starting to be compromised. Can't protest something you disagree with because you'll get arrested. Can't speak your mind online or offline because, oh, you'll be deemed as a racist or a sexist or a bigot or whatever fucking trendy word of the day comes around. Well, enough is enough. I'm not encouraging violence. I'm not encouraging any kind of dissidence other than lawful dissidence and other than organizational dissidents. Where we as a people, all peoples, all colors, all creeds, it doesn't goddamn matter. I'm not going to pull the race card here. I, I don't believe in that race card bullshit. I'm getting so sick and tired of hearing that, especially from elected officials. From elected officials and appointed officials. Okay? It's time we start thinking as individuals, but as people. Okay? I love this country for a reason because it's my home and yet, like the anthem says, home and native land. I got a lot of respect for the First Nations. I have a lot of respect for Chinese Canadians. I have a lot of respect for black Canadians. I have a lot of respect for all Canadians of all colors, all creeds. Yes, I'll even say it too. I have a lot of respect for white Canadians. Oh, did I say white? Oh my goodness. Heaven fucking forbid, eh? See, I, I, I personally don't care what color anybody is. I don't. I never have. What I care about is your actions and how you treat people, right? Peace and harmony and security. The right to self-sufficiency. The right to happiness. The right to make money without having the government take another 42% because they want to spend another $25 million or $50 million to some fucking cause. And they should be looking after the Canadian people. Right? What gets me is that there, are, there might be people out there that might just fucking snap and say they've had enough. And don't say we didn't warn you. There are people getting frustrated and tired. They can't go to work. They can't associate here. They can't do that. Right? They can't pay their bills. They can't pay their fucking ridiculous taxes. Because some shithead in Ottawa wants to make a few more bucks at your expense. Right? And then what? Oh, can't have a gun. That's dangerous. Oh, you can't drink this. Oh, it can't touch that. Then what? Hmm? Bring in the cross fists, and all of a sudden our hero Winston gets compromised. There are five lights, not four. Interesting. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. You tell me. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. Or you can find me at Facebook at CrustyCanuck. Or on the Instagram at Canuck Krusty. You can find me here on the Podbean as well as on YouTube. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, give me a share, like, all that good stuff. And if you do feel like donating, I'll give you uh, links to my subscription and donation pages. Please consider donating if you can. A, a steady donation of uh, $5 or more a month will get you a free t-shirt from my Teespring line. And I'm also working on a different t-shirt design too, so stay tuned for that as well. But, uh, man, <laughs> it's getting ridiculous here. Everywhere we turn around, someone's screaming racism, someone's screaming, oh, uh, prejudice. And yet, the only prejudice that I am seeing is the right to assemble, the right to speak your mind, and the right to be. That doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter what religion you are, right? You can let mosques play, they're called a prayer all the time, but you can't let churches ring their bells. You can't let synagogues do their thing. Right? Nothing racist about that. Nothing prejudiced about that at all, is there? I'm not a religious person, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what God you believe in. I don't care if you believe in this or believe in that. As far as I'm concerned, you've got the right to pray in this country. Doesn't matter what faith you are. Right? But it doesn't matter what time of year it is either, too. It should be uh, paramount every day of the year. Right? But no, of course, that can't happen because that would be politically incorrect of, of people to allow that, right? So let's get rid of this fear. Let's get rid of this garbage bullshit. Let's get rid of these garbage dogmas in regards to how we should govern our lives and start promoting more self-sufficiency. Let's get the gardens planted. Let's get our crops on the go, okay? And those government officials out there who want to tax and charge at random because you think you're doing your job, maybe you better sit back and think about your job for a second. And think how ethically right 
you may be or how ethically right you may not be. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay? I, for one, I would love to go out and protest this gun issue. But because of my commitments to my work, I can't always just call my boss and say, hey, I am going to call in sick today because I'm going to go protest. It doesn't work that way. I, too, have got bills to pay, ladies and gentlemen, and i got things to do. But uh, I'm not buying this crap of what's essential and what's not essential. We're all essential as far as I'm concerned. Period. Right? And uh, when it comes to violence in this country, I hate to see anything happen. But honestly, I, I fear something is in the works. Something very, very bad. And I hate to say it, I think some of us might be caught off guard in it too. But uh, I'm not going to sit and try to promote doom and gloom and what have you. But uh, I, I, I just want to see people get ahead. I want us to get over this. I want us to be positive. But I think maybe a few of us who might have to stand up against something very, very fucking terrible. And uh, who knows? It, maybe it's speculation, but something in my heart says something ain't going right. We got to do something about it. All right? With all these taxes and stuff coming out now too, yeah, the, the government gave us an extension, blah, 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 blah. But my friend, having to pay an additional six grand, right? That's a good chunk of his pension, and that's a good chunk of his salary. Gone. Because he got, quote-unquote, reassessed, right? <coughs> Not to mention some of the other benefits he had to give up, too, and wait for in the service of his nation. So, so while people are getting mad at a tweet, hence, you know, the Brian Adams thing I just mentioned, there are people getting it right at the chuff every day. Anyway, I, I digress. But uh, when it comes to taxes, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, in a perfect world, we'd say not file, not do this, but they just garnish your wages and garnish this and then go to court and then spend more money prosecuting you and persecuting you for being such a, such a nasty Canadian for not paying your share of taxes. And yet, <laughs> oh, fuck. Which reminds me too, there'll be an article I'll be posting in the description. Uh, in regards to tax havens and how Justin is so adamant against people in their tax havens. And yet his family has incurred a tax haven since uh, Trudeau Sr., that's not, that's not Pierre, that's Pierre's father, incorporated his own little tax havens when he owned those gas stations back in the 1920s. So, contradiction in terms, word salad, we all know the routine, right? The virtual parliament, a joke. I would say get back to work, Parliament. Get the shit on the go. Right? Start working for your riding. Start working for your constituents. Start working again for the Canadian people. And not just a handful of commies from China. And uh, special interest groups that want to take uh, Canadian gold. And uh, harbor Canadian resources. To make you look good and make you fucking rich. But hey, who am I? I'm just some cranky old fucking veteran with a podcast, right? Well, it's a start. To all the Crusty Connect listeners out there, thank you again for your beautiful and positive feedback that I've received in my last couple of videos. Um, I try to get at least one video out a week, a video and a podcast if I can, but I get the podcast going anyway to keep people in tune, uh, I get my own insight, and get people to think for themselves and start questioning certain aspects of our authority who like to uh, hand out tickets for not social distancing and all this other crap. But uh, I, know, I encourage my listeners, get out in the public. Speak your mind. Take a stand. It doesn't matter if you're a yellow vest. doesn't matter if you're a gun rights advocate. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Freedom of speech is key here. Freedom of association. Freedom of assembly. Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, too. Right? I encourage go legislature. Every federal building, I encourage. Hold up your signs. And tell them enough is enough. Don't be telling us enough is enough. We're going to tell you enough is enough. All right? And I'd like to see it happen in the most non-violent way as possible. And I'm not going to sit here and act like a tree hugger and kumbaya and shake my tambourine and smoke a hoolie. I'm just trying to make a point. But as I mentioned earlier, 
I hate to see anything violent happen, but some of us feel that something will be. And it'll be fucking terrible. But that's a chance I'm willing to take. How about you? All right. It's just... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Tell me what you think. CrestedBeCanuck67 at gmail.com or on the Facebook under the same name. And uh, even here in Podbean and YouTube, give me a comment, give me a thumbs up. Share this around. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And uh, tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the conversation going. Let's question these people. Give them the hard questions, like I've said time and time again. And if they call you a racist, then they're a fool. If they call you a sexist or a misogynist, then they're a fool. Nothing sexist or misogynistic about questioning anybody of authority. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's our that's our fundamental right as far as I'm concerned. Inalienable human rights. Magna Carta, our Constitution. You know, it goes back to the Canada Act of, of April 1982. Unfortunately, there's no clause in there to defend ourselves, but under the criminal code, we are allowed to defend ourselves force with force. But even that's becoming a, a double-edged sword, and so to speak. Now, we're being conditioned to be nice and to be careful, but uh, life is about taking risks, taking chances. I'm not going to walk outside with a mask on my face every goddamn day. I have to wear one at my workplace. That's only in certain areas. But in the same sense, I'm not going to come home and do it. I'm not going to go outside and do it. You know? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. I don't break the law. You don't break the law. Well, but uh, I'm, I'm getting tired of having being told we have to toe imaginary lines to make a handful of fucking leaders feel special. When in the same sense, we're not finding these leaders trying to make Canada feel special either. Too many lies. Too much dogma. Too much red tape. Too much regulation. Too many formalities. Not enough realities. And anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 12th of May, 2020. And if you like what you see in here, please give me a comment, thumbs up. Share it all around, all that good stuff. And if you feel like donating, please do. I do give some of my money when I do make it. Uh, I give about 30% to the Veteran Association Food Bank out of Calgary, Alberta. They're a great charity. They help veterans in need. I'll leave a link to uh, their work there in the description. But in the same sense, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, keep your chin up. I look after your friends and your loved ones and yourself. And remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here.